So I developed this device uh, in order to try and help students who perhaps are more visually orientated to conceptualise uh, how cosines are calculated. And the problem I always had with school was the cosines were just something you either punched out in your calculator or looked up uh, from a table and I found that really quite obtuse. Um, so the basic elements of this are we've got a unit circle, so a circle with a radius of 1. And if we know that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, then half the circle is essentially pi. So as we move along here, we're essentially moving between 0 and pi along the circumference. And any point on this, the edge of this circle is essentially a unit vector from its origin. So that's how we can do the unit, the vector maths uh, from geometry. So on this axis, we have essentially 0 to pi. And that's what's happening as we move this around. And we have essentially plus and minus 1. And this is our cosine. Uh, and I'll explain a little bit of how that's uh, calculated in a minute. Uh, on the back, I'll just show you how it actually functions. We've got a circle and a strip of plastic. And the plastic basically pushes that slider back and forth. And that's how it works. Uh, uh, if you're making one of these, I'd give it a bit of a sand inside. Um, uh, just sand it down and then I'd put a little bit of PTFE grease inside it. Alrighty, so before we get stuck into this too much, I'm going to explain why the dot product is such an interesting function. So we have a vector and we have another vector, unit vectors here, so they have a length of 1. And this is the origin. Then one of the properties of the dot product is that it will be negative if the vectors are facing away from each other and it will be positive if the vectors are facing towards each other. And if the um, angle between them is at right angle, then uh, the dot product will be zero, which is essentially the cosine. Now you'd say, okay, well that's all very interesting. When do you use them? Well, if you do 3D printing and you want to know whether a point is outside or inside an object, and because you're, you're going to slice this object up and print it, then each of these faces has a normal, and we can basically create a vector to say are we inside or outside it by just examining that one property of whether they face each other. Um, so the dot products used in all sorts of ways in both 2D and 3D math. Um, it's one of those sort of building blocks that a lot of other functions um, are constructed on top of. So from geometry, we know that um, if we have two vectors a and b and they're unit vectors, so I'll actually change that notation. So unit vectors a and b actually have a hat on them and they're done with the little things. So a unit vector a, just as an example, is calculated by taking the vector capital A and dividing it by the magnitude of A so that we end up with uh, a length of 1. So <clears throat> the formula for the dot product is ax dot bx plus ay dot by and that gives us the cosine of the angle between those two vectors which have a magnitude of 1. So another way of thinking about this is that we have a circle that has a radius of 1 and we have two points on the circle and what we're doing is measuring the distance in radians around that circle because it's 1 uh, and that's essentially our angle. Okay, so let's put some numbers into that formula. So in this example we've got two points. We've got minus 5, so I'll write it on here. So this will be our A point. And this will be our B point, just there and just there. Okay, so A is minus 0.5 uh, and 0.866, and B is 0.5 and 0.866 for the X and Y values. Okay, and remember they're unit vectors, so they have a length of 1 
and they're essentially points on a circle which has a radius of 1. Okay? So if we calculate our x side, it's minus 0 0.25, and our y side, multiply these two together, we get 0 0.75. We add them together, we get 0 0.5. Now, <clears throat> 0 0.5 along this scale, um, if we run our finger across and cross it here, it's a third of pi, which is 60 degrees. So the, so the, the angle theta between these two points is 60 degrees. Now, an interesting thing happens if one of our points is on the x-axis. So let's say we take x equals 1, y equals 0 for a, and then for b we use the same number as before. Okay, so on the y side, because we've got 0 here, it cancels that out. And because it's a unit vector, we just have 1 times the x-axis. So returning to our device, if we now make this point here A, then any other point uh, on this circle uh, has a cosine of the x value. Okay? So essentially what we're doing is we're measuring from here all the way around the edge. And if you think about it, the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So half a circle is pi, which is essentially what's running across the top here. So as we're moving around the circle, we're essentially creating our cosine by plotting the values of x against our first point, which is on the x-axis. Okay, well thanks for watching. I hope uh, you find this is a, a useful device and uh, I hope your students find it helpful in uh, explaining some of these concepts.